Welcome to our Express Mozilla tutorial series. This chapter deals specifically with the nonlinear programming capabilities of Mozilla. You'll find documentation in two places relative to uh, Express Nonlinear in the standard distribution files with the uh, directory address shown at the bottom of the screen here. And equivalent material with our new online help site. You'll see the URL down at the bottom of the screen here as well. Both of these deal with the MMXNLP Moselle module for nonlinear programming. So now let's take a look at a couple of examples. Uh, the first one is very, very simple just to get warmed up a little bit. Uh, we'll highlight the differences between uh, nonlinear and the linear uh, syntax for Moselle. <clears throat> In this case, we have we're using the nonlinear solver, and any expressions in the objective function or constraints that have a nonlinear structure to them will be declared as nonlinear constraints. Decision variables are still MP bars. And so in this case, we have a simple quadratic function that will express as the objective function um, as, uh, as a function of one decision variable with a linear bound on it there. Everything else is uh, virtually the same as any other Moselle model. So it's very, very straightforward, and we can run this. We're just looking for the value of x that generates the minimum objective value, and we can see that as we're instructing it to print out the uh, objective value and the corresponding value of x. So let's generalize this a little bit more. Let's say we have the same problem, but we want to explore the black box capabilities of Express Nonlinear. They're very, very flexible, and we'll demonstrate them here on that same problem. The whole idea is that you start with a very flexible user function. And this can be as simple or as compl or complex as need be to uh, reflect your business logic. So the idea is that we can structure a list of real arguments to this function. And they can basically be any combination of explicit real values that we want to drive the function ourselves with, or perhaps let the optimizer drive with current decision variable values. We can also feed it uh, tuple indexes so that we can reference global arrays inside the, uh, uh, the function itself. So the idea here is that we're going to parse this list of real arguments. In this case, it's, we're just picking up the active decision variable for x as the one and only argument, and then use that locally in our, our same um, quadratic function. So keep in mind that this function could be uh, very, very flexible. It could be calling uh, any range of Moselle logic. We can reach out to other external programs. For example, if you had a discrete event simulation model that you wanted to drive it with inputs as current decision variable values, you could do any of that. So the idea is that we have this function, and all we need to do to make use of it is to register it. So I'm going to register it here. We have this my function declared as a user function in general, very generically, but then we specify the type of user function. In this case, it's going to be Moselle logic. Contrast that with Excel um, or an Excel macro function, or maybe even a function in some uh, native language that you can write externally. So plenty of opportunities here. Once it's registered, now we can reference it. So instead of our objective function being a direct algebraic form, uh, if we want to take advantage of black box user functions, we simply reference with, with the Moselle F function representing the, the, the registered function instance and the list in square brackets is anything with the list here. Anything in the square brackets is a list. So we're going to um, provide it with a single element of the list being the nonlinear expression for uh, the decision variable value. Same bounds, we'll go ahead and solve that here. But then the other thing we'll do is 
after we've solved, we'd love to spit out their results, but also um, print out a sensitivity range. So we can do that using the same user function, except we'll just build up the list ourselves. So in a loop of 20, we'll, we'll uh, uh, reference the, the step as if it was a decision, decision variable, but we're, now we're going to take direct control of it and then call that same user function here. So if we run this, we'll see our answer and the corresponding uh, decision variable value. And if we can look across our sensitivity range, we can see, sure enough, it matches pretty much the saddle point between six and seven. That's where we find our, our uh, solution as well. So the key here is that we have very, very flexible capabilities to, uh, to define one or more user functions. The function is black boxes. We can register those according to the, uh, the source logic type and then declare them very, very flexibly. Thank you for watching this segment of our Express Mozilla tutorial series.